So now we're going to talk about oxidation numbers. And if you remember, a synonym for oxidation number is charge. So we need to review a few things first. So the first thing would be, how do you figure out the atomic number of an atom? So the first place is you need to know where to look. So we need to look at the periodic table. And remember, when you look at the periodic table, there's going to be two numbers. You need to look at the whole number. It's also the number that the periodic table is organized by, like 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's that whole number. Next, we need to figure out what does the atomic number of an atom tell you. And remember, it tells you the number of protons an atom has. Next, we want to review the number of electrons an atom is equal to. And if you remember, for a neutral atom, the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons that atom has. So the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And for a neutral atom, that's also equal to the number of electrons. We want to review what a valence electron is. And if you watch the chapter 19 video, I said it over and over and over and over so you couldn't forget it. Valence electrons are electrons in the outermost energy level. So when we drew those atoms back in that atoms chapter with the rings around it, it would have been that, the electrons, the dots, in that last ring. So how do you figure out how many valence electrons an atom has. Well, you could draw the atom out like we were talking about. You could draw that structure out. But here's a shortcut, okay? So you look at the periodic table, and it's going to be the last number, the group number. So let's practice this. So here's just a portion of the periodic table. So group one here starts with hydrogen, lithium, sodium, okay? So group one. Group one has just the one number. So it's the last number of the group number. So group one has one valence electron. Group two has two. But when you skip down here, you have 13. This is group 13. It has boron, aluminum, gallium. Group 13 would have three. Group 14 would have four. Group 15 would have five. Group 16 would have six. Group 17 would have seven. Group 18 would have eight. Okay? Okay, so brand new information. So an oxidation number or a charge, remember those are synonyms, they have two parts. Okay, so the first part is going to be the charge, so a plus or a minus, and then the second part is going to be a number part. Now how do we figure out that? Okay, so the charge part, so whether it's positive or negative, it's going to be positive if you lose electrons. And some people think that is confusing. Okay. But you got to think about what electrons are. Electrons are negative. So normally you have equal numbers of positive and negatives. Okay. So if you have equal numbers of positive and negatives and you lose negatives, then your overall charge would be positive. So if you remember if you have five positive and five negative. But if you lose a negative, then you have five positive and four negative. So your overall charge would be plus one. So then the opposite is true if you gain electrons. If you gain electrons, you're negative. So you're gaining a negative charge, so your overall charge is negative. Some people like to think of this as um, losing weight. Not that it's everyone needs to lose weight, but a lot of society thinks that losing weight is a, ne you know, is a good thing. Okay? So it's a positive experience. Okay. So another new thing. So the number part of the oxidation number, how do we figure that out? So that number is going to be equal to how many electrons it's losing or gaining. Because that is how much charge you have. So remember the example I gave you? So if you have five protons, five electrons, your charge is zero. If you lose one electron, you're losing one negative charge. So your overall charge will be plus one. But if you lost two electrons, your charge would be plus two. If you gained two electrons, then it would be minus two. Okay, so let's first talk about this review stuff. So it might be a good idea to get your periodic table out. Um, I do have this tiny snippet here, and I blew up the boxes here that we're going to need. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to talk about the atomic number. So for aluminum, remember that's the whole number from the periodic table, so we're talking about number 13. Remember the number of protons is equal to the atomic number, so that would also be 13. And the valence electrons for aluminum. So you find aluminum on the periodic table, here it is, and we go to the top of the column, group 13, so it's that last number. So we're talking about aluminum having three valence electrons. Number of electrons. Remember, this is a neutral atom, unless they tell us differently. So this is going to have the same number of electrons as protons. So we're going to have 13. OK, so that's pretty much all review. Now we're going to talk about type of ion. So when we talk about type of ion, let's go ahead and review our Bohr model. Okay, so when we do a Bohr model, we put the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus, okay? And then we're going to put 13 electrons on here. And so remember that two electrons can go on the first ring, and then eight can go on the second ring. And so that's a total of 10 electrons. And we have a total of 13, right? Right here, 13 to put on there for aluminum. So we're going to put three more on there. So now this is a Bohr model. This is what we have drawn in the last couple chapters. And so remember, our valence electrons are those ones that are found in that outer ring. So that's how we found that. And when we're talking about the type of ion, that our atom is going to form, we're talking about whether or not it has a positive or negative charge. So we need to talk about whether it's going to lose or gain electrons. And why might that happen? Well, an atom wants to have eight valence electrons in this outer energy level right here. Well, right now it has three. So we need to talk whether or not it would be more, which way it would be easier. Would it be easy for this thing to gain five electrons because three plus five is eight? Or what if this one lost all three of these? What if it lost those three? And then it would have eight valence electrons in this energy level. And this energy level would be its outer electron then. Okay. So you basically have to say to yourself, what's easier, three or five? And three would be easier. It's kind of like, would you rather have three homework problems or five? Well, obviously, you'd rather have three. So this atom is going to lose electrons. And remember from earlier, losing electrons is losing a negative charge. So that is a positive ion. So then you're going to talk about your oxidation number. That's how many. So it's a positive, and then how many? Three. So plus three. OK, so I'm not going to go into all that explanation on the other ones. I just wanted to make sure you figured out what, how the heck I figured that out. OK, antinomy. So again, you're going to look at the periodic table. We have number 51 here, atomic number 51. Number of protons, same thing, 51. Valence electrons, you got to find it on the periodic table. Where's antinomy? Here he is, right here. Group 15, so that would be 5. Number of electrons equal to my number of protons, so 51 type of ion, you've got to look for the valence electrons, it's 5. So would it be easier to gain 3 or lose 5? Will it be easier to gain 3, gain a negative charge? So it would be negative. And how many? 3. So negative Excuse 3. Me, you were okay, so I'm going to give you some time to do some practice now. So first one is neon. Okay, so hopefully you had time to try that. So neon atomic number. So we're looking at the atomic number on this big box here, 10. 
and number of protons is the same thing, so 10, valence electron. So we find neon on the snippet of periodic table up here, number 18, so it's 8. Electrons is the same as my protons, so 10. Type of ion. So it wants 8 electrons, it has 8 electrons, so it is not going to form a positive or negative because it's not going to gain or lose electrons. So we are having no type of ion. So I'm not going to put circle either one there. Oxidation number, I would call that an oxidation number of zero. So this was kind of so this was kind of a trick question. So you could put zero oxidation number or not 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 applicable. Okay. Carbon, try carbon for me. Okay, so carbon's atomic number, if you look right here, is six. So the number of protons is six. The valence electrons, you find it on the periodic table. It's in group 14, so we have four. Number of electrons, the same as the protons, so that's six. Type of ion. So you might have noticed that valence electrons is four. So it is equally easy to gain four or lose four electrons. So for that reason, it could be positive or negative. So our oxidation number would be positive or negative 4. So you put plus or minus 4, just like that.